Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today with my friends from allfreeknitting.com we are going to answer one of the most common questions that we receive on my yarn dyeing tutorials and that is will this work on acrylic or cotton? And today I'm going to show you that this method works to dye 100% wool but not cotton or acrylic yarn. And I have these little butterflies tied up that we are going to use in our dyeing process. All right, so I have a microwave safe container and I'm taking my wool, cotton, and acrylic yarns and I'm just going to soak them in here. Normally I would let yarn uh, pre-soak a bit uh, before dyeing, but uh, I'm not going to bother waiting that long today. All right, because this is really just a proof of concept. And I'm not measuring, I'm just going to add a healthy glug, it's probably a bit too much, a healthy glug of white vinegar. Because if you, as you should know from watching my past tutorials, that what you need to dye yarn are wool um, or some kind of natural fiber. This should also work on silk-based yarns. You will need water, um, heat, which we'll get from the microwave, and last but not acid, and last but not least, a source of color, for which I am just using some liquid food coloring. Okay, that's 12 drops of green, and I've got a ton of green, so I'm going to add even more color. Alright, I'm adding a ton of color because I really want you to show which fibers get colored from this process and which don't. Now. You know, if you're going to look, say, here's the acrylic, you'd be like, oh, look how green that is. But really, the proof is going to be at the end once we've finished cooking it. Looks like the cotton is taking a bit longer to soak. But we're really going to, you know, cook the hell out of this. And heat is something, you know, you want to be careful with applying too much heat um, in your dyeing process. But... I don't really care if I destroy the fibers here. Oh yeah, that's getting nice and wet. Huh, it's just floating. Maybe I can sink it down a bit with the acrylic. Yeah. All right. These paper towels come in handy to get the extra dye off your hands. And now to the microwave. that safely in the microwave and I'm going to start off with three minutes on the timer. I want to bring the dye bath just to a boil and then stop uh, and then I'm going to stop it. Sorry there's a lot of reflection so you can't really see it. So I will be back. All right I had to add some additional time so you can see whoop, fogged up my lens a bit that it is just boiling. And I'm going to, careful because it's hot, remove this from the microwave and let it sit until it cools. Now sometimes at this point I would actually remove the yarns um, from the dye bath to let them cool a little easier. But I really want to give the acrylic right there and the cotton every possible chance to absorb color. And there is the wool sample right there. And there's so much dye in the dye bath that I doubt that we'll see the water clear completely because of the dye to fiber ratio. But I am going to let this sit a bit and come back when it is cool enough that I would reach my hands in there. We've now waited long enough. The dye is very cool. It's um, very much room temperature. And so I'm now going to pull out each of them and put them on this plate. Here's the acrylic. Here's the cotton, and here is our wool. Now, already you should notice a big difference between the three. And you may, looking at it, think, 
huh, it looks like that the cotton and the acrylic have died. But look how much dye the wool has taken on. But the truth will come out when we rinse these off. See, this is the acrylic. See how just all that color is just washing right out. It had, it looked green because the dye bath itself was green. Now let's take a look at the cotton. have managed to stain the cotton. And finally, I mean, we clearly, clearly dyed our wool. But, you know, looking at the three, wool, acrylic, and cotton, you know, the acrylic definitely took no dye. It appears that I added enough vinegar for the cotton to take some dye, or else it might take a while. I'll let it soak a bit to see if the dye does come back out. Well, here we have it. We were unable to dye 100% acrylic yarn with food coloring, although you will notice that from the heat, the yarn has bloomed a bit. We successfully dyed the 100% wool yarn a really, really saturated green color. And as for the cotton, Something interesting happened as it dried. You can see that the color, it looked more consistent when wet, but the color is all kind of gone, like where it was more wet to the tips um, of the yarn. So I'm not sure if I would trust it. Certainly, when compared with the wool, this is not a good method for dyeing cotton yarn especially since I am not willing to guarantee that this is color fast. But I invite you to reply to this tutorial with other videos and show me your own um, experiments dyeing cotton um, yarn at your home. But I think a more successful way to dye cotton yarn, and I will say that this was a non-bleached cotton, it's 100% organic um, sort of tan color. But I challenge you guys to have fun dyeing cotton and tell me how you do it and what it works and what makes it work. But I think myself, I, if I wanted to try to dye cotton, I would go get a uh, t-shirt tie dyeing kit to dye it um, because you know you dye cotton t-shirts. Anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you for watching this video on what you can and cannot dye with food coloring brought to you by allfreeknitting.com